hole when I hit up your phone? Do you ever think about how I'm gonna sing you lots of bad songs? No, they're not bad songs. They're great songs, but I'm gonna sing them to you very badly. There we go. That's what I meant to say. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another lesson of Guitar with Gavin. Uh, I'm playing with some new toys. Today. Well, one old toy and a new toy. I, uh, I'm busting out the Strat today. You know, I need to give it some love. And I recently got a Boss Katana Mark II 50 watt amp. And uh, she's gorgeous. She is. Uh, I still have my orange. She's just half the weight and uh, a lot easier to carry around. But anyways, today we are going to be talking about a unrequited love song in Spanish class because all Spanish class love leads to great things, aka the TV show Community, right? Uh, we are talking about White Lights by Goose. And I know I kind of, you know, gushed over them once before on the Shamalama Ding Dong uh, video, but, um, I can, and I still can in this video. I'll try not to, but Goose is amazing, guys. Goose is fantastic, so please go listen to him. Um, White Lights, though. This is such an easy, simple song. I mean, easy, breezy, cover girl. This is, let's go, right? Let's jump on in. Uh, there's really only two parts. Uh, one is just kind of our main chord progression, and then we have two little, like, breakdown parts that we're going to talk about. So... The chord progression really is just A to D. And Rick, is, who is the guitarist, Peter, who is playing keyboard for the song, um, Rick, his guitar part changes depending on what's going on. So we're gonna talk about both of those. But the bulk of the song is just A to D. I messed it up a little bit right there. but. Um, and so Rick plays it sometimes up here. Sometimes he goes on here and kind of does the more open chord. And he plays that part, just A and D, when he's singing. Um, when it, it's, it, except for kind of like the second chorus, he, he'll start playing his other part. But when Peter is singing, he does this a, a quick little hit on E and then to a D. So the way that I like to do it is going up here, playing our, our A triad, seven, six, five on our D, G, and B. And then we're just gonna go to this quick little D shaped E chord. And that's gonna be six on our D, four on the G, five on the B, four on our high E. And then we go to our D. And so I, just for the sake of not having to move my hand a whole lot, go to this D bar chord right here, right? Um, but what I see Rick playing is just taking this E shaped, uh, or this D shaped E that we just played and scooting it down a whole step. That's a D chord. Um, so he'll go. But yeah, that's, our chord progression. And so there's two other parts. One is right after the first chorus going into our second verse. And we just kind of go a G, not kind of go, we go, we go G major, we go F sharp minor, and then we go to an F. And that's it. And then we go right back into the chord progression. Yeah, so to hear that, G, F sharp minor, F. There you go, that's what it sounds like. So the one other little part they do a little bit differently is right before the solo. And so I think this is after the second chorus and literally, like I said, right before the solo starts. They just go, uh, they do that A, E real fast, and then to a G major. That's all it is. And then they start the solo. So let's talk about the soloing. So Peter lays down a filthy keyboard solo. Um, it is fantastic. It is absolutely amazing. Um, and he shreds it every single time. 
And uh, well, I can't give you lessons on that. So we're gonna talk about what Rick does, right? Um, Rick kind of starts off here in, in just our A major pentatonic. And I'm just going two, four, two, four, six on our D, two, four on our D, and then two, four, six on the G. And you know, what we're doing here is we're just thinking chord tones. We're just thinking A chord tones, D chord tones the whole time. It's super simple. And he kind of starts off with solos hanging around their fifth fret and their B a little bit. And that seventh fret on the B is our D, is the major third of the D. So there's a chord tone right there for you. Um, but what I kind of like to do is kind of go from here and kind of jump it up here kind of quick, right? Um, so I like to go and slide that all the way up to the 10th fret on our B. And the reason why I like this little area is just the little sweet spot for hitting the lots of different chord tones. Right here, the 10th fret on our B is a chord tone for both our A note and, or both our A chord and our D chord. If we bend that up, or if we go to the 12th fret on our B, we bend it up a whole step, that is the major third of our A chord. It's also the major seventh of our D chord. And so it kind of adds a nice little bit of tension right there. Um, if we go to the 15th fret on our B, that's our D note. So there's a chord tone right there, right? I mean, they're just all over the place. And so I like going up here a lot. You know, just keep it pretty sweet, pretty happy, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, I, I try and stick very major pentatonic on this because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a love song. You know, we're trying to be happy here. Um, Something that I do want to touch on, and uh, Rick does this just all the time, and he's so freaking good at it. I'm not very good at it. And it's just that really fast picking. And he's, he's so good at it with keeping it like so sweet and happy and in this love song vibe. Because usually when you think of this fast picking style like that, you know, we're thinking like harder rock kind of. And so he does, he, oh, he's so freaking good, so good. Um, but one thing that I wanted to touch on here is he is doing that on the 14th fret of our D string over the A chord, and that's the, the fifth of our A, right? So that's gonna have this, uh, it, it's, it's a chord tone. Really, right? And so, but it's maybe a little bit of tension, you know, maybe. Um, and then the next thing that he does is he'll go and do that on the 11th fret of our D string. And I love this because this is the major third of our A, right? So you can do it when the band is giving you the A chord, but if you do it when the band is giving you a D chord, it's the major seventh. And so it kind of gives you this, it's tension without being Tense, right? Like it's kind of like going like this. Oops, sorry. You know that that bend is up to the major seventh, and it's like not quite like a blues tension. It's much more of like this prettier melodic kind of tension. Um, so I really like that. And then if we go back to the 14th fret when we're on the D chord, it just makes it a D sus two in a way. Um, so it's still gonna sound very pretty. Um, you know, it's... This is a D sus two right here, right? So um, it's gonna sound very pretty, very dreamy. And so it's just a nice little trick, you know, if you're doing this and kind of soloing along. You know, like I said, I'm not very good at this. I'm trying, I wish I was. But, you know, it sounds cool, it's gonna sound great. Um, you know, kick on a little bit of distortion to really punch through right there and it's, it's gonna sound very sweet, very pretty. Um, but yeah, guys, that's, that's the song, that's White Lights, that's some goose for you. Like I said, I really love goose, so um, please go check them out. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and, and happy playing, happy jamming, and hope to, guys, hope to see you guys back.